Hello everyone, this is Tim Dobia Ganger. I'm Hong Zhejiang. I'm currently a PhD student at Columbia University. Hi, I'm Tony Philip, and I'm an MS student in the electrical department at Columbia University. Hi, I'm Chi. I'm a master's student from the Columbia University. In this video, we will show you the design of our FMCW radar. Okay, let me introduce you to the setup. It's the 24 gigahertz radar module. Its signal will be sent to a single energy differential amplifier, which the signal, where the signal will be converted to differential form, and then sent into the chip here, and mixed with our switching mixer, which is our chip. The output of the mixer will be go up, will go off chip again, and sent to an anti-aliasing filter, which will drive, which will drive the two sound, two eight bit sound ADC, which is our chip. After sample by the ADC, the data will be sent back to the PGA and uh, uh, further sent back to the MATLAB uh, for digital signal processing. At the same time, a PGA is creating a 8-bit code provided to the DAC such that the DAC will generate a uh, 500 Hz triangular wave which will be used to frequency modulate the 24 GHz radar module here. Okay, let's first see uh, the radar's output without any object in front of it. Right now, there's no object in front of the radar, and uh, okay, so this is output. The output spectrum is uh, almost flat with some fluctuations, but it's fine. Okay, let's now see the radar's output with an object that is one meter away from the radar. Okay. So it's clear at the output, you can see a peak appearing at one meter. Okay, let's now see uh, the radar's output with an object that is 1.5 meter away from the radar. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, uh, there is a 1.5, there's a peak at 1.5 meter. Let's just take a deeper look into the signal chain here. So as you can see here, uh, the radar is right here. Uh, the signal after the the signal will be sent to the single entity differential amplifier and then sent to the chip. Now look at the scope here. The green one is the output of the single entity differential amplifier. Uh, I'm, only, I'm only showing one channel right now. Uh, after going into the chip, the, the signal will be mixed with a uh, LO signal, that is a sweeping LO signal through a switching mixer. And the blue one is the output of the switching mixer, as you can see here. It actually follows the same shape as the uh, input signal. And if I put an object in front of the radar, you can see the scope, so uh, you, you can see the output is changing. Now, after some filtering, after the signal coming out of the uh, coming out of the mixer, it will be filtered by the anti aliasing filter, which is on the board, and this will be the anti aliasing filter's output. I have set the entire span here to be 500 millisecond. That is the sweeping uh, time time period for our sweeping MO. As you can see here, every five, every 500 millisecond, you can see a little bit change on the uh, on the scope here. That means there is a uh, object in front of the radar, and you are you are detecting that every 500 milliseconds. First, let me briefly talk about the principle of operation for the FMCW radar. As you can see on the right, the VCO will take in the modulating signal from the DAC and generate a chirp, which will part of that will be sent to the transmitter, and part of it will be sent to the mixer, which will be further mixed with the received signal. On the left, as you can see here, the red one is the transmitted signal, and the green one is the received signal. Because there is a time difference, when you mix those two signals, you will get a constant frequency component in your baseband signal. The further the object, the larger the time difference, so the larger the frequency component. If there are multiple objects in front of the radar, you would expect multiple frequency frequency component within your basement signal. Next, let me do a quick system overview of our chip. As we can see here, our chip can be divided into three parts. The first part, which is on the bottom, is a current summing deck plus a deserializer. The deserializer will take in the signal from FPGA and send that signal to an 8-bit current summing deck. The deck will generate a triangular wave which will modulate 
the radar front end's VCO. The second part is on the top, which is a sweeping spectrum analyzer. It will take in the baseband signal and first mix it with the switch mode mixer. The air low signal of the switch mode mixer is coming from the FPGA. It is a PWM modulated LO. The PWM at carrier is at 300 kHz. The modulated signal is a sine wave with its frequency ranging from 500 Hz to 25 kHz in the time period of 500 second of 500 millisecond. So within 500 millisecond, all the frequency components within the baseband signal will be down mixed to DC and further filtered by the anti-aliasing filter, which is driving to 8-bit SAR ADC. After sampled by the ADC, data will be this will be serialized by the serializer and sent back to the fpga the third part which is on the middle is basically a zero crossing counter when the radar is operating in doppler mode the frequency component in its baseband signal is related to the speed of the moving object. The zero crossing counter will count to the diff time difference between two zero crossing points and figure out the frequency based on that information and further deduce the speed of the moving object. Here is the block diagram of an 8 bit SAR ADC. The input of the 8 bit SAR will be a differential signal, which will be sampled by a bootstrap sampler at 125 kHz. The output of the sampler will be sent to a capacitive DAC. The output of the DAC will be further sent to the strong comparator and the 8 bit SAR logic. Based on the output of the comparator, the SAR logic will determine how to switch the switches inside the capacitive array. The output of the SAR will be further serialized by the serializer and sent to the FPGA. All the clock signal inside this uh, SAR ADC is coming from a 4 MHz clock signal. In the previous section, Hongzhou has summarized our chip design very well. Next, I'm going to talk about the test interface design. To be able to test the chip, We've constructed an apparatus using an external FPGA board to assist testing. The digital section contains three parts. In the next section, I will go over three of them one by one. The first part I'm going to talk about is the PWM generator. As Hongzhou has mentioned, we have a switch mode mixer on our chip, and the expected input of our LO signal is to be generated in the digital section as a PWM signal. The signal starts as a digital ramp signal on the right-hand side. Um, this ramp is used as the input to a cordic block to generate a digital sine wave, in this case a 24-bit sine wave. The cordic block, as well as other blocks, are fully pipelined, uh, which allows us to run it at hundreds of megahertz on this low-end FPGA board. The digital cordic, in theory, can always generate four-position output. But unfortunately, since we're using fixed point integer numbers, we suffer from say, precision loss. This precision loss will show up as distortion peaks in the spectrum. To remove this, I added the, I added the first order sigma delta modulator to reduce the number of bits from 24 to 12. The 12 bits is then used by a very simple PWM modulator, a digital PWM modulator to generate the PWM wave. And then the next part is the deserializer and PC interface. Essentially, what we're doing here is that we convert the incoming signal from the ADC uh, into an UART signal that can be recognized by UART to USB dongle. In this way, we can send data to the PC. One issue we're facing here is that uh, the driving capability of the on-chip buffers turns out to be too weak for our application. Um, it means that the output waveform will have a phase shift um, compared to the clock signal, which is 4 MHz. To be able to obtain the optimal sampling point in the deserializer, the input data stream, which runs at 4 MHz, is oversampled using a 64 MHz clock. And then the optimal phase is chosen uh, from the oversampled samples. And then after deserializing, we obtain some parallel data. In this case, we have two 8-bit parallel buses for the ADC. Those two parallel signals need to be transmitted to the PC in an interlaced fashion because we only have one UART channel. To tell the PC which um, to tell the PC which data comes from which ADC, we have an interlaced control unit which sends additional messages in the UART stream that tells the PC, you know, here we are starting sampling 
and the next the next sample immediately comes after this message will come from ADC number one, and the next one will be ADC number two, and so on and so forth. The last part I'm going to talk about is the D, is the DAC interface. And this process node, in theory, it is possible to achieve very high number of bits directly. But due to the very high effort required to make such a design, we ended up only making an 8-bit DAC. The 8-bit DAC is pretty good in terms of its accuracy and everything. And it is capable of running at much higher frequency than what it's designed for. Mm, to exploit the full potential of this stack, I added another sigma to delta modulator here. So if we are able to run the DAC at higher frequency, then the sigma delta modulator will generate naturally a dithering pattern that will increase the number, the effective number of bits after passing the output signal through a low pass filter, as shown in the bottom corner. Now let's look at the DAC part. An 8-bit card steer DAC with a 125 kilo sampling rate is designed to generate the modulation signal. The current steer DAC is a preferred structure for high bandwidth converters. This structure works by summing the current produced by an arrow of current source. We wish to convert an 8-bit digital signal to an analog current. Each input bit controls a current that is binary weighted with respect to a unit value. Here, D1 denotes the least significant bit, and Dn is the most significant bit. The current source are scaled up by a factor of 2 from one bit to the next. Then, we can get the following expression. An off-chip TIA is used to convert the current to voltage and drive the VCO in the reader module. The selection of the current source and switch array structure as well as their layout presents a challenge in the DAC design. Component values are scaled from a unit size A, then 2 times A, 4 times A, 8 times A, 16 times A, 32 times A, 64 times A, and ultimately 128 times A. The elements are arranged using the common central matching method. The numbers in the figure shown below indicate the current source and the switch size value to which the cell belongs. Then we can take a look at the simulation results. First is the DAC signal in signal out simulation. The DAC input signal is the serial input. It is generated in MATLAB and the sampling rate is 125 kilo. The DAC output signal is the current signal. The full scale value is 521 microampere. It is slightly larger than the ideal value, which is 512 microampere. The static performance of the DAC can be tested by DNL and INL. To simulate the DNL and the INL of the DAC, a ramp function sh should be produced at the output of the DAC. Square wave signals with various durations and delays will be utilized as inputs to the developed DAC to have such a function as the output. The DAC can produce a stair step function with voltages that range from a minimum of 1 volt to a maximum of 2.1 volt. So we can get the maximum value of DNL is 0.75 LSB and the maximum value of INL is 0.65 LSB. For the dynamic performance, an ideal 8-bit ADC is used to provide an 8-bit input data pattern to the DAC. The input to the ADC is the sinusoidal signal that the DAC is attempting to reconstruct. The set of dynamic tests with different corners and the simulation results are shown below. The inverter driver stage is the circuit component that most severely restricts our design. The delay between the DAC inputs and the switch inputs is significantly increased by this circuit block. As a result, these delays may lead to output voltage distortion, which negatively affects emerger performance like SFDR, SNDR, and ENOB.
For the measurement part, current voltage conversion is accomplished using a single-ended TIA. Waveform generator is implemented in ADALM 2000. The pattern generator is used to generate an 8-bit sort to signal. Only static parameters are fully characterized for the DAC. DAC can produce a stair-step function with voltage. It is changed from a minimum of 20 mV to a maximum of 5.02 volt. The data from the static test for every input was collected and written in an Excel file. The DNL and INL of the results are displayed below. The maximum value of DNL and INL is 2 LSB and 2.5 LSB respectively. Now let's look at the design of the mixer for this project. When we started the project, we knew that we required two main matrices uh, for a good performance uh, from the FMCW radar. One was linearity and the second one was harmonic rejection. We, in order to achieve both of these uh, matrices, we evaluated uh, several different types of topologies that are available. The first topology that we evaluated was the single ballast mixer. Um, before evaluating the double ballast mixer for its enhanced LO rejection uh, capability. Uh, finally, we moved to the passive mixer based on research that indicated that we could achieve harmonic rejection um, at the same time, high linearity um, at the, in the mixer. But as you may know, passive mixers do not have gain. Therefore, we have another stage prior to the mixer which, um, which compensates for the loss um, in a passive mixer, which is typically two by pi. The layout of the mixer is also pretty straightforward. We knew that we had to reduce offsets and distortions, uh, more specifically second order distortion that could happen due to an imbalance in a different structure. Therefore, we went ahead with the centroid layout with interdigitation. As you may see here, the mixer has a perfect symmetry on, on both sides. You can see a clear left, side, left half and a clear right half. And we have the yellow in the middle. The signals come from the top and leave from the bottom. The RF signal that needs to be processed come from the top. And so does the LO, which goes through the center of the mixer. After mixing, it moves out uh, from the bottom as IF or intermediate frequency. All right, now let's have a look at the PCB design for the project. We have the chip at the center of the board with the radar module at the top right half. And we have an FPGA to process the signals, uh, the digital signals that come from the chip. Um, on the on the left side, the single and signals from the radar module first enter a single led to differential converter before going to the chip. It uses both the I and Q signals in order to do object detection. Once the mixing is done within the chip, the signals come out and go to several low pass filters which are on the outside of the chip. And once the filtering is done, the the signals go back into into the chip for digitalization by an 8-bit SAR ADC, which is um, which is an on-chip. The, the digital signals then move out from the chip to the FPGA using level shifters uh, in order to make it compatible with the IO voltage levels of the FPGA. And as you may recall, while all this is happening, the, the DAC signal from the from the chip is modulating the radar in order to achieve a true FMCW. Uh, capability. The bottom layer is a solid ground plane. We try to keep as few tracks as possible in order to allow all the chips to have an even and solid um, ground layer. That's all for the video. Thank you for watching.